So let's assume that the people who created the V model weren't completely mental. Let's assume they had like, some secret mystical wisdom that over the ages has been corrupted and obscured by layers of rules. Right, this video will not help you with any exam or ISTQB or anything that other people want you to power at them. I really only care about the practical application of models in testing, not a universal definition. So run away screaming now if you want the certification stuff. So to describe a modern V model, a testing process diagram to you, you've got various uh, definition stages on the left and then various testing stages on the right. And the testing stages map on to the definition stages, so uh, business requirements might map on to UAT. And, Business benefit might map onto operational acceptance testing, etc., etc. I don't know. And this doesn't work. This wastes time and money and detrimentally affects everyone involved. So what do we do? Well, we throw away the V model. No, we don't. We look for its essence. This is like a, a kind of Da Vinci Code thing for the V model. We're assuming that hidden within here there is a, a deep and underpinning wisdom that can benefit us. But over the years, the uh, the secret societies have obscured it for their own reasons to indoctrinate us into their process and way of thinking rather than making it clear for the masses. So first we have to get rid of the notion of time. Every project I've been on has iterations regardless of whether it's waterfall or agile or whatever else. Nothing works with a linear timeline because we learn things as we go. So assume that any model that you see that uses a linear representation of time with no feedback loops and no iteration will not map on to the real world. And when I was a lad back in the dim and distant past, we learned about verification and validation. So the V and the V model helped us remember this. Except that it didn't. Because for me, mnemonics that use the same letter for different concepts don't work. V mnemonics for me deal with V for vendetta or V for vengeance. Depends which comics you read. And these concepts do not exist in testing. They exist in project management, and just in projects and work in general, but not in testing. And validation was, are we doing the right thing? Verification, did we do it right? But we have another model for that. We've got questioning and, che and checking. We question decisions, plans, designs, requirements. Are you sure? Should we do this? Should we do this other thing? How often should we do this? Etc. Etc. Then as the, the stuff we're building starts to materialize, we check. Did we do what we said? And we continue to ask questions. Should we continue to carry on this way given what we've just learned? What else did we do that we don't understand the knock-on effect of? So I don't V and V anymore. I question and check. So should I throw away the V model? Well, no, because in the V model, this left-hand line represents questioning and the right-hand side represents checking. And another thing we have to sort out in our V model relates to the ordering. Because when they drew it for software testing, they made it an ordered model based on time, which made it appear that you didn't check the business case until it was live, or you didn't check the business requirements until UAT, and you spent all the time from building the business requirements to delivery at UAT, just writing all your UAT scripts and, and ideas and thoughts. Now clearly that's just utter nonsense. Now we can treat anything written on the questioning side as a bulleted list, a brain dump of what we think we have available to question. Requirements, business case, decision log, GUI, whatever. And we can order it by word length or alphabetically. Word length works really well with a V model diagram because the short words sit at the top where the space is smallest. And since we remove the notion of time, we can question these things whenever we consider it appropriate to do so and check them as soon as something exists to check. And as we elaborate, we question and check in different ways, numerous ways. So I'm going to reclaim the V model for myself. I'm not going to let other people define this nonsense in ways that don't work so that it adds value. In fact, I'm going to make that V stand for value, V for value, where our job in the process of software development is to add value, however we do that, to reframe, question and check. Do it simply and clearly and own our models and communications so we do them in ways that benefit our domain and our context, 
rather than for historical reasons that we don't understand or agree with. And it's your choice whether you do that, whether you accept the V model in a form that doesn't work, or whether you throw it away entirely. So that's enough for me. You decide, you go away and do what you want, what is appropriate for you. That's the only thing. As long as you own it. If you decide that uh, you're going to take the historical viewpoint, good for you. If you decide to question it, I think even better for you. Shh. Okay. Have they gone? All right, cool. This is the PS. Because right, it doesn't need to be a V model. Right? I just threw in all that V for value stuff as, as motivational noise. In the real world, we have a set of stuff. And we have to remember to question it and check it. So you could model that as three columns. Stuff. Some questions on each piece of stuff. Some checks to make on each stuff. But we don't limit ourselves to just questions and checks because we question our answers. And we model it all as a graph. And we build lines between all this stuff. We don't just use columns, we iterate, we do whatever it takes to model our world. By all means, start with a V model. If you do, make sure you own it and redefine it for yourself. But the important thing is to build your own model.